Masters, uh, Emanuele, Adi, and Ada for the invitation. And uh, um, it's always very, uh, it's also been very well uh, received uh, from you, thanks so much. <laughs> and it's always so um, uh, nice and uh, simulating to, to me such a, uh, an active and uh, uh, inspiring uh, community like yours. And so, again, thanks so much for, for the invitation. So we have seen uh, also uh, yesterday with very uh, nice talks that there is a long way to go from the basic idea of the qubit to the actual computer. And all these lines uh, that we see there, there are, there are a lot of technology steps. Uh, and uh, actually, what I'm going to talk is about some of them. And uh, <coughs> uh, uh, you know, to build a quantum computer, we need so much physics. And uh, the idea is that physics is, starts from here, but in all these steps, we need to know a lot about the physics of our devices and the conceptual approach. And, uh, and you know, that's uh, uh, you know, some kind of famous graph. You know, we need to solve all these problems. And something very nice from this conference is that we have touched a lot of these topics. And that's very exciting. Obviously, when there are big theories, I feel a little bit lost. Uh, and I will conduct you on a more you know, safe ground, no, no, from me, <laughs> for me safe, about you know, uh, the physical quantum processor. That's what I'm talking more about. Uh, what we uh, know, uh, also I would say summary of the yesterday uh, lectures, that we know that superconducting technology is the leading one for the quantum computer. We know that aluminum technology is by far the most advanced. We know that Justin Jenkins are wonder of nature. I grabbed from you, Michael, the word wonder. You know, I completely agree. Yeah, amazing wonder of nature, and we'll get into that also soon. So all the, 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 the uh, qubits which are around are all based on aluminum technology, <coughs> and also the, the, the key one at the moment are the transmonts. I mean, that's, you know, uh, even if we know that there are, there are limits and we have to go uh, beyond. And uh, uh, we also uh, know uh, that we need to improve. The last talk was also a, a, a clear sign in this direction. And, uh, uh, you know, that's clear from this technology, but uh, also at the conference we get a good representation of all this. Um, uh, so I will talk about some work we have been doing in Napoli, and uh, first that's uh, uh, my group, and I would like to, to highlight Davide Mazzarotti and Domenico Montemuro, who are uh, researchers, Gian Piero Pepe, my colleague, and then there is uh, some of the things I will show more. Uh, you know, credits go to Alessandro Miano, who is now a postdoc in Michel Devore Group in Yale, uh, Luigi Di Palma, and Alima Am uh, Ahmad, uh, which is halfway between our group and the group of, okay, here we can probably, okay, good. Uh, the group of SIC, uh, uh, which is a company located, you know, it's some kind of, uh, was uh, separated by the whole IPRES, and they do basically quantum computation. Uh, Marco Arzeo is the leader of the group of the lab in Napoli, which is close to our lab. And we have some kind of little joint adventure, Matt Hutchins in London, and Oleg Muganov is the big boss in New York. And uh, uh, also we'll touch some collaboration about, uh, you know, the, the, the last transparency with CNR, Antonio Vettori and Carmine Granata, and also some nice uh, uh, collaboration with theory group, Saro Fazio and Procolo Lucignano who are in Napoli. Thank you. And Valentina Brosco, CNR. And uh, uh, because I'll touch a few different arguments. So <coughs> we will, uh, you know, the, the main idea of the talk is uh, superconducting quantum circuits with two main ideas. You know, the first one will use basically a standard um, approach based on aluminum technology. And we'll discuss some kind of uh, little ideas about the novel way of control. This goes. Uh, in the direction that we have discussed of better scalability. Better scalability, you know, we know that we can build 100 uh, qubits with standard uh, heterodyne uh, uh, readout, uh, but if we increase the number, we probably sh should also think of other ideas, and one is uh, the one promoted by SIC, using by 
single flux quantum circuits <coughs> uh, to, to improve uh, scalability and to have some kind of advantage. Then I will also explore the idea of alternative qubit layouts and basically the idea of replacing the, uh, the junction with what we call a ferrotransmer based on, on ferromagnetic barriers. Again, uh, going there, that basically we care about uh, this part and this part. So uh, uh, I, I, I like also to start from this paper by John Martins, where uh, you know he says that uh, qubit research basically started in the 80s, and I would briefly sketch this concept when uh, uh, Tony Reagan posed the question: if Macroscopic variables would they behave in a quantum mechanical fashion? You know, that's uh, in qubit. About just an effect. Uh, this wonder of nature, uh, you know, we have some kind of primary and secondary <coughs> quantum effects. The primary is very simple, it's what we also have discussed up to now. So I will get, I will profit for all the introduction before. Basically, we have this dissipationless current, and uh, this happens when we are in the phase regime. So the uh, AJ, which is this energy, is much larger than the Coulomb energy, which is on the side of the junction. And in this case, we have well-defined phase, and we have very nice codified to electromagnetic fields response, and we have very well-known circuit approach. And also what Nadal was asking yesterday about, it's very important, the, electro, the dynamics of the junction or the electrodynamics. And also, also how to do that, you know, that's uh, probably the, uh, I will come back to this shortly. You know, this is one of the most elegant experiments, the one which is basically the basis to use a superconducting circuit for a qubit <laughs> and with a macroscopic quantum tunneling effect. So you can have thermal activation or you can have macroscopic tunneling effect. I, I will get back to that in a moment, but from the moment, you know, this is some kind of secondary quantum effect, which is the basis to use the Gerson junctions in a quantum device. And then we know that in the case, the charge energy is larger, so we can be in the other regime and so we so we have that Hamiltonian that will be specific then of the circuit. We solve the Hamiltonian, then we find the eigenfunctions, eigenvalues of, the, of our qubit. So that's the process. And thanks to these secondary quantum effects, we are able to, uh, to, to use Gerson junction for qubits. And obviously, the transmon is this uh, advanced understanding of all our all energies work to build some kind of protected circuit and to find the right spot where to operate. So uh, we know all that, and we know that these are the three key points. Again, awareness, I, I just summarize what I just told before. Awareness of collective degrees of freedom, then experimental observation, microscopic quantum tunneling, because this means that we are able to see the, the level, and finally, quantization of microscopic circuit. These are the, the steps. And also, these are somehow the selection rules to understand if potential qubits with other, with the, you know, with other materials, layouts, and whatever. So uh, this is the microscopic quantum effect that I want to, to, to sketch in a moment, to repeat, because that's very, uh, you know, we have this barrier energy, this is the, uh, the washboard potential, this is one of the valleys, and the, 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 the nice idea here is that we have uh, thermal activation, we can go over, or we can pass through microscopic quantum tunneling. That's what is very exciting, is that uh, these are IV curves of uh, uh, junction that we call in a under damp regime. So are characterized by this hysteretic behavior and we have fluctuations. So when it rises to the critical current, this is stochastic process and by measuring the stochastic process, we can be able to, to <coughs> understand uh, through fluctuations if uh, a microscopic quantum time is happening. So this is the probability of which as a function of temperature from 10 millikelvin to 600 millikelvin and uh, if we plot the width, which is somehow the spread of the dissipation, we see that uh, when they are in thermal regime, there is some kind of dependence on temperature. And when uh, <coughs> at some temperature, in this case about 40 millikelvin, uh, you know, there is saturation, so the width doesn't depend anymore on the temperature. This is possible if the junction is decoupled from the rest of the circuit, and if uh, it has a quality factor that we can see here from uh, Q. Uh, which depends on plasma frequency, resistance, and capacitance of the old circuit. 
Obviously, this is simple to say, but when you do this experiment, these measurements are very tricky and very complicated. Saturation can be made by whatever noise, and you need to be sure that you're doing the right thing. So you need some kind of cell consistency, and these, you know, these experiments were first, uh, you know, there are some kind of premium in the 90s at IBM, and then the group of uh, Devore, Martin, St. Clark put, you know, put the, the, the big uh, points on that. Uh, so how do you make sure? You know, this crossover temperature depends on the plasma frequency. And uh, <coughs> uh, if you change the, if you apply magnetic field, you change the critical current, you change the plasma frequency, so you have a tuning of the crossover temperature. And this is the experiment uh, where you apply magnetic field, and you see that there is a tuning of the, of the uh, critic, uh, crossover temperature. This is important because this tells us that this is uh, really microscopic quantum tunnel is not just simple noise of your system. So we are able to reconstruct and to understand that we have the two qubit states by studying the fluctuations of the stochastic process of our Joyson junction. So, but there is something more about this one. So these are secondary effects which are fundamental to use as a qubit and we need to be sure to, to know them <coughs> in order to, to, to go further. And then, obviously, also, oh Michael, yesterday, uh, uh, you know, underlined this, what is wonderful dissipation, and then it's inductance, nonlinear inductance. There is something also very nice that we can see from here, that uh, <coughs> uh, when we go in a resistive state, uh, this, both in a single juncture or in a squid uh, geometry, uh, we can have uh, uh, some kind of uh, quick uh, passage of... Uh, of uh, magnetic flux, which is somehow uh, being used in the 80s. So uh, in the 70s, there was a latching logic uh, that's shown you on the two states. And then in the mid 80s, the RSRTQ logic, uh, where here there is a, a, a resistance added in shunt that allowed the generation of uh, uh, single flux quantum pulses in a controllable way. And uh, uh, basically, the, the nice things about that is that they are very fast and they, they, they are uh, somehow uh, easy to be manipulated. We can get to hundreds of gigahertz. And that's also the big, uh, uh, you know, from Oleg Muganov and Sik, you know, that's big business about digital circuits and they're really masters, uh, masters on that. <coughs> uh, then, obviously, we can build our Hamiltonian, make the circuit the way we want. So that, that's the way also Trasman works. We'll add more parts at, at, at the, at the circuit Hamiltonian, then we'll solve and we see the, the, the solution. That's the progress we have followed here uh, in these years with the amazing uh, values of coherence time. You know, if we think that uh, well, nanoseconds now we're about uh, milliseconds, it's, it's really uh, exciting. So uh, that's the, the, the strategy uh, of... Um, of um, using or try to use the other way of readout. So <coughs> this is some kind of multi-chip model. Uh, here the, the, the qubit is faced with the, uh, all the classical electronics. And so there is this kind of quantum classic interface but based on single quantum digital logic. Here um, uh, the idea is that uh, basically you read, you know, now the current method you read when it's uh, warm. You need a lot of wires. Here, you, you read when it's cold, and then you can move uh, uh, there. Uh, this is basically uh, an alternative method to measuring qubits involving uh, <coughs> mapping the qubit on the photon occupation in the cavity. Then what uh, <coughs> you do is that you detect the photon by using a multi just a multiplier, and then uh, at that point, you, uh, you measure the state by circulating current, and then you can move uh, along the a transmission line. So that's the basic idea. And actually, there are some uh, nice experiments. This is an experiment by Mark Dermot, Porto. Uh, and here it's basically uh, uh, the, the idea. You, we use the concept of, mm, of, again, of paneling here. So you will have the two states depending on which state you are, you are passing the, the, the barrier. Uh, in this respect, we have uh, proposed a new device, <coughs> which we call Joyson Digital Phase Detector. 
which is composed by two RF squids, like this one, this is the Hamiltonian, and then we have two degrees of freedom, which are basically these two fluxes here. And uh, uh, the, the nice story about that is that we can modify the potential shape by plus, uh, phi plus so it's the sum of the fluxes over there. Basically, here we have two Johnson junction with inductance in the, in the middle. And uh, uh, by the sum of the fluxes, we can change the potential this way. And uh, uh, the difference provides the tilt of the, of the potential. Again, it's some kind of exercise of, uh, of the Hamiltonian of quantum engineering uh, for the readout. So basically, by changing these fluxes, we may have these different profiles with one minima, two minima, uh, uh, and so far. Uh, so the device works like that. We basically reset the state, then we make it ready and uh, apply flux, as you can see from there, and we change the shape of the profile. Then we detect. In this case, we apply the signal uh, that uh, we want to detect, uh, interacts with the Johnson Digital Fast Detector, which is this squid I've shown you before. <coughs> and the particle uh, starts harmonic motion by the microwave of the signal, and then it finally will fall in one of the two of the two uh, valleys. And so that will reveal has two different circulating currents. So uh, basically, uh, depending, so we'll probe the, the signal by this current like that or the other way around. Yes? How do you control separately phi 1 and phi 2? Uh, I will show you the, the sample in a moment. You know, we, we have uh, different lines, and, and you will see in a moment. So basically, we have four different uh, uh, moments ready uh, to prepare the state, to read out, we digitalize, and then we sense at the end. So that's uh, the way we, 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 we drive this. So that's the sample. Uh, um, Emmanuel, uh, you know, the uh, sample has been made by uh, uh, SIC, and uh, uh, again, uh, credits go to Alessandro, Miano, and Luigi Di Palma, for most of everybody, you know, they, they, uh, the, the circuit has been made by, by again, by SIC, and we have, uh, uh, Alessandro, all different lines to, to feed, uh, to feed uh, separately. And we also have some additional ones to balance if the, you know, if the junctions are not perfect, something like that, you know. It's, it's, uh, but this, again, is uh, SIC, they are masters in doing that. We, uh, you know, we use uh, the technology, it's based on, on niobium device. We have the simulations, and then also for <coughs> the measurement, it's simple and nice uh, in the sense that uh, basically the inductance depends on the potential. So we can basically measure our device uh, by detecting the, the change in the resonant frequency. So we just put it in, uh, in our uh, facilities where we measure it, where we measure all kinds of qubits and uh, covered qubits. So it's a very simple measurement that to, where we see that the, you know, we can measure the state of our device by measuring the, the resonance frequency of the, of the device. So that these are the final results. And probably without getting technicalities, I can show you that what is important is that we have the tuning of the, <coughs> of the resonance frequency um, uh, of the resonant frequency. And also this behavior is hysteretic that really says that there are the different, uh, two different, uh, um, uh, well, and uh, uh, two different ones, yes. Um, uh, something that also important to show him before we have had a very nice talk about uh, uh, how you can change uh, I would say that now we have never had so many different superconducting materials and never so many different types of Johnson junction with potential smart fun functionalities as we've seen before the uh, turnability. You know, the one that uh, uh, more aware are gate and magnetic field, uh, the gate mon is an example of how to use this degree of freedom. And magnetic field, already in all designs we have seen, is, is fundamental to change and to tune or all, you know, to tune all parts of the qubit, and especially charging uh, and just an energy. And uh, we have a long experience on a different of variety of, uh, so from high TC to topological insulator and uh, graphene uh, with, with flakes. But I will talk about these ferromagnetic junctions. We started a collaboration some time ago with a group of Mark Blamire in Cambridge. 
and now uh, that was somehow the, the starting point. You know, what is exciting is about these junctions that actually you have these two interfaces, and yesterday Roberta gave some flavors of that, where basically, uh, you know, you have uh, traditional uh, aluminum, niobium, niobium nitride superconducting electrodes, and when uh, you have this kind of interface with magnetic materials, they work as a spin mixers. And so they can generate triplet state, which are somehow protected inside the barrier. That's very exciting because they are more robust and they can travel for a longer space. Actually, all starting demonstrations are based on the fact that, you know, uh, studying the critical current as a function of barrier thickness, and they prove that when it's, you know, uh, extremely large, that's some kind of sensation of triple superconductivity. We we'll propose also something more. So, <coughs> you know, what happens is that the, actually the order parameter has some kind of uh, 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 variation in space. So, if you want to do something smart, you try to do junctions with different uh, uh, thickness, you compare them and you understand that uh, something's happening due to the magnetic effect. Uh, again, you can calculate inside. The, 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 the correlation function and send that there is really a triplet uh, uh, inside. Uh, these, these are some kind of, uh, again, you know, uh, different kind of topology for the junctions. We have worked at the beginning on that one, and I will show you how this was the start to understand something very important about their nature, but now we have some kind of new versions based also on other ferromagnetic barriers can are probably more flexible to put inside the quantum circuit. So this is niobium nitride, gadolinium. This is a fair insulator barrier. And uh, so what is nice about this barrier is the tunnel one, but with the ferromagnetic features. About these junctions, we have proved <coughs> in another way studying the critical current as a function of, of temperature. And uh, we have this kind of characteristic behavior, uh, you know, for, for not uh, who was, those who are deep, they know that. Uh, uh, this is the one, the classical one, because of, uh, you know, a mega of uh, curve. And when we see this kind of deviation, there are some kind of signatures that something interesting is happening. And basically, this kind of behavior says that uh, for some conditions of the barrier, some kind of competition between the spin uh, mixing effects at the barrier and some impurities inside, we can to pass from the, you know, standard singlet to, to the triplet one conditions which are protected. This is some kind of the fast diagram where we have uh, all possibilities and uh, basically the two important parameters are spin orbit coupling and impurity potential. And they drive this, uh, you know, this uh, uh, coexistence and tuning of spin singlet and spin triplet port, uh, transport in uh, spin filter junctions. Uh, also something very important that we did, again this is with the <coughs> gadolinium and nitride barriers is that we demonstrate by microscopic quantum tunnel that there are two energy levels, they are very low noise uh, values, and, uh, and also this has been proved uh, by exact measurements, and these are, this is technical, but just as that uh, the electrodynamics and dynamics of the junctions are, are fine and, and appropriate. And then, what now we get to something more unique, you know, this kind of uh, uh, unique feature that uh, we have hysteretic behavior the magnetic pattern. So, uh, and this has been proved before on the gadolinium barrier of Shunyu, and then this on uh, palladium iron, and then on permaloy more recent. With some kind of nice idea, because, you know, th the point is that we have proved that uh, uh, this also was known in, uh, <coughs> for other junctions, but ferromagnetic junctions, that uh, the state, the critical current depends on the history of the junction. So uh, uh, we may have, for the same magnetic field, two different, uh, ma uh, two different values of the critical current. So that's important because this will depend on the history. And then we have some kind of nice way of this effect can be also enhanced by applying a microwave. Uh, so uh, this is the difference, you know, without applying and not applying. This is our data on the... Um, the one on the palladium uh, in collaboration with the group also of uh, Valery Rezanov in Moscow a few years ago. And, uh, and uh, uh, so the, the idea is the following one. We have some kind of tuning of the, 
critical current and so of all energies by just applying a magnetic pulse. Uh, or when you have in general, for the general transmon geometry, you know, you need continuously to apply flux during the, the operation. That, that, that's uh, the, the idea. And obviously, with the resonant frequency, it's, it's over there. <coughs> Our idea, and that's the, the paper and the collaboration with a group of uh, Saro Fazio, is that uh, um, to replace the, the junction here, the, the one in aluminum, with some kind of ferromagnetic junction. Uh, that can be spin filter, like gadolinium, but this is a little bit more complicated, or the one SFS type, uh, the, uh, where, again, the, the ferromagnet is, can be uh, permalloy, uh, whatever. Uh, even if here systematic studies should be done more to, to get more efficient behavior. So the idea is that basically, uh, by applying, uh, and these are all the simulations work, and you can find all details here, you can basically tune the, the frequency, as and frequency of your device, by applying these kind of magnetic pulses. So without need of applying always uh, uh, magnetic field. So you will tune the energy and uh, um, just by using magnetic field pulses. This can be also done with RF pulses. <coughs> Finally, I'm done. And uh, obviously, this also turns as a very nice way if you put the qubit, uh, you know, ferromagnetic junction there, uh, because this can be also a qubit sensor to understand also all magnetization process occurring in, in the junction. And the very last step, and then I get to, to, to the very end, is that, uh, you know, what we have done here is a little bit different from what's shown before, in the sense that the Johnson junction is here. Uh, and then we deposit the, the ferromagnet with the rest of the structure. So this is a diff slightly different layout of the junction, but with a very important technological feedback, because this is the, uh, the Joyson junction, and uh, then there is a ferromagnet. Everybody knows that people that do qubits, they don't want to put uh, magnetic materials inside. This way, you can do the first part of the device somewhere, and then you add the rest one, the rest of the, of the device, and so it's some kind of more flexible uh, um, technology. Uh, about this junction, we have seen that they are top quality, in the sense that they are the you know, typical uh, figure mates that you do, do go measure with the, um, uh, you know, IV curves, uh, temperature dependence, and then also <coughs> the magnetic pattern. And here it's important because you see that this uh, uh, doubling of the peak uh, with this hysteretic behavior, you can, it happens only if you put the ferromagnetic here, because we have checked with or without. And so I get uh, to the conclusions that uh, um, uh, we, uh, um, you know, we are working on these two big problems to to find solution for digital readout of uh, qubits. And uh, up to now, we, we have done also measurements. We tried now to interface with the real qubit. And then <coughs> uh, for this one, um, we, we, we set some kind of all steps to understand that this, is, this technology based on ferro-transmon, uh, ferro-magnet can be compatible with the, the leading technologies. Uh, we call this device again ferrotasma, and now we, we have two important collaborations to make uh, with the two qubits and to, to see if, uh, how far we can go. Thanks for the attention.